When we are in love, we feel like we are experiencing something unique to us. We become intensely focused on our beloved and they pervade our thoughts, dreams and actions. So are you curious to find out why love affects our brain the same way as cocaine? Do you want to understand romantic love so that you can maintain the feeling of romantic love in your relationship? Or if you have been rejected by someone you love, do you want to know how to move on from that? Then Helen Fisher's book Why We Love is perfect for you. Helen Fisher is an American biological anthropologist recognized as a leading authority on the subject of love. So without any further delay, let's see some of the smart ideas from her book Why We Love. Smart idea number 1, romantic love is like cocaine. For thousands of years, people have wondered what the cause of love is. Some believe it is a profoundly spiritual phenomena. But modern science has proven that it is the result of chemicals in the brain. In particular, the experience of love is caused by three key neurotransmitters: dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Dopamine is one of the key neurotransmitters researchers have found to coincide with feelings of romantic love. In fact, it's one of the most powerful neurotransmitters responsible for your mood in general, influencing attention, motivation, and addiction and all important characteristics of being in love dopamine helps explain why love is so addictive researchers have shown that when you are with someone you love you experience something similar to taking a drug like cocaine dopamine floods your brain filling you with a feeling of bliss that you can't wait to relieve that's why people who are in love feel dependent on and crave their loved ones just as drug addicts do with their substances The next key neurotransmitter involved is norepinephrine which has effects that resemble dopamines. The feelings of stimulations that accompany love like a rapid heartbeat, hard to fall asleep and a loss of appetite all of these are caused by the release of norepinephrine. The last of the key love neurotransmitters is serotonin. Serotonin is responsible for the increased restlessness and the constant thinking about your beloved. But unlike the two other neurotransmitters, serotonin levels are actually lower when you are in love. That's because the level of serotonin is pushed downwards when the levels of the other two chemicals rise. In this case, less is more. The less serotonin, the more you obsess about your loved one. Smart idea number 2, we get attracted to people different from us. Everyone has a different image of their ideal partner. Some like them small, some tall, some thin, some fat. Nevertheless, there is one type of person we all find attractive, someone different from ourselves. We find people who are different from us mysterious and novel, which in turn makes them more desirable. This desire for the strange and new is actually hardwired into our brains. Novelty can cause increased levels of dopamine to be released, which as we have seen leads to the feelings of romantic love. But why has evolution led us to desire those who are different from us? The answer could lie in the link between our genes and our immune systems. Researchers have shown that when two parents with dissimilar DNA mate, their child is less at risk of illness and disease than a child from parents with similar DNA. This explains why we are attracted to people different from us. Smart idea number 3, we all have a unique love map. We all have a love map which charts the characteristics we find desirable in a mate. As we get older, we start to discover what we particularly like in our partners. A big smile, blue eyes, or a good sense of humor. As these details accumulate over time, they form into a love map, a chart in our unconscious mind of all the things like eye and hair color or the type of personality we find the most attractive. But where does a love map come from? Your particular love map derives from your personal experiences and is therefore unique to you. No one else will have the precise set of likes and dislikes that you have built up as a consequence of your unique experiences. We know this because studies have shown that even identical twins with similar values and interests will have developed their own preferences in love. So what does your love map do exactly? Your love map is what guides you to falling in love with one particular person. Let's explain with a thought experiment. Imagine you walk into a room full of strangers. You look around and see many potential partners. 
but it's likely you won't be attracted to them all. Instead, there will be a few or maybe just one towards whom you will feel strongly drawn. This is the person who best fits your love map. Smart idea number 4, exciting dates can increase relationship satisfaction. We all know that romantic love can ebb and flow. One day you feel immensely attracted to someone, the next detached and indifferent. Love seems to follow its own rules, but that's not to say it's uncontrollable. In fact, there are a few things you can do to keep the flame alive. Like doing new and exciting things, As explained earlier, dopamine is one of the chemicals that stimulates the feeling of romantic love, and it's released when you do something exciting or new. This was studied in 1974 by psychologist Arthur Aron and Donald Dutton, who tested how exciting situations can trigger love. They set up an experiment on two bridges, one a low, stable concrete bridge, the other a wobbly rope bridge across a gorge. They asked males to walk across one of the bridges where a female researcher stood waiting for them. She asked them some questions and then offered for them to call her afterwards if they had any questions. The men who walked across the dangerous bridge were far more likely to call the researcher afterwards. Why? Because the exciting situation in which they had met had triggered the feelings of romantic love. So if you sense that your feelings for your partner are drifting away, There is one sure thing you can do to rekindle them. Try doing some new and exciting things together. Smart idea number 5, when you have been rejected, force yourself to remain active. As most people know, there are few pains greater than being rejected by someone you love. It can make you feel depressed and want to just lie around all day. But instead of giving up on yourself, you need to stop wallowing in self-pity and take action. In fact, This is the only way to mitigate the pain. Why? Because being active keeps you distracted while you detach from the one you love. When you have been rejected, the chemical reaction in the brain is pretty much the same as if you had desperately fallen in love. Serotonin levels decrease and you obsessively think about the person who rejected you. But instead of caving in and contacting the beloved, you have to stay strong and keep a distance to allow you to detach. with the help of a lot of distraction how one day at a time tell yourself that you won't contact your beloved today and keep busy for example by going out with friends just committing yourself to keeping up with the tasks and jobs of everyday life from washing the dishes to going to work will keep you occupied and help you stay away another benefit of being active is that it helps elevate your mood Seeing that new experiences release dopamine, doing something new and exciting like rock climbing, skateboarding or bungee jumping will help you deal with your negative feelings. Furthermore, exercise also helps increase levels of serotonin, and some psychiatrists even say that exercise can be as effective as psychotherapy or antidepressant drugs in treating depression. So if you are feeling down, get up and do some sports and you will start feeling better right away. So now if I have to sum up this whole book in just two lines then that would be romantic love is not an emotion it is a drive as powerful as hunger by harnessing our knowledge of the science of love we can keep the romantic spark alive and deal with the negative feelings of rejection as the author said leto had it right over 2000 years ago the god of love lives in a state of need If you want to understand this central quality of human nature, romantic love to its roots, then I would definitely recommend you to read this book Why We Love by Helen Fisher. If you want, you can buy this book by following the link given below in the description. At last, a little request to you. If you have found this video useful, then please share it with your friends and family because in this way, you can also help to change someone's life. Thanks for watching. More wisdom, more solution. battle life